gamers, I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And today on Dice and Dragons, we are going to be reviewing the first wave of expansions for Marvel Champions by Fantasy Flight Games. Now, all of these expansions have different designers, but it is the same team behind Marvel Champions that put it together. So you can thank Caleb Grace, Nate French, and Michael Boggs. Now, the expansions that we're going to be reviewing are the Green Goblin Scenario Pack, the Captain America Hero Pack, and the Miss Marvel Hero Pack. With that being said, I'm going to let Julie tell you more about these expansions. Well, like the base game, uh, it's intended for ages 14 and above, uh, plays one to four players in about 45 to 90 minutes. Yes. So what are you going to be doing with these expansions? Well, the same thing you were doing in Marvel Champions. You're going to have villains, schemes, and you're going to need to beat the villains and stop them from completing their schemes and getting whatever it is they want. You also have different heroes. So you have the Miss Marvel and Captain America hero packs that will contain a whole new set of cards, which are their hero cards, the protection deck and the leadership deck. Protection is Miss Marvel and leadership is Captain America. You do get some similar cards to what you already have in the base game, but you do get a whole slew of new cards. And then each of the hero packs also comes with a set of cards for the other base decks like uh, Aggression and Justice that can be mixed in and used in any deck that you want to make. So you are really starting to see that deck building element of the living card game aspect come to the forefront more with these expansions. So that being said, what time is it, Julie? Well, it's time to grab our drinks. A little eggnog for me. <laughs> Something a little chocolatey festive. <laughs> grab our best friends. And sidekick. Good, take it to the table. Take it to the table. Now, who are you most excited about, Miss Marvel or Captain America? Well, who do you think? I've been talking about Captain America. I just wish they could have put out Captain America and Thor at the same time. That would have been... Thor's coming in February. Okay, then, then we'll get to play Captain America and Thor against something. And we can also add in Iron Man, get the big three. Yeah, Iron Man, remember, was a slow build, though, in this game. <laughs> Anyways, we'll take it to the table and we'll see. Yep, we'll be taking it to the table. Now we're going to take a look at the components for the first wave of expansions for Marvel Champions, the card game. Now we've got all three expansions on the table right now. This section is the Green Goblin, the scenario pack. We've got Steve Rogers up here and Miss Marvel along the bottom. Let's start by taking a look at the Green Goblin scenario pack. So with the rules, you can see the expansion symbol, which is difficult to see down there. We do get four modular packs that can be mixed in with other games now, well, not other games, but uh, other villains and main schemes. So you do have the modular encounter sets and it explains how to use them. We've got the two main schemes, Risky Business and the Mutagen Formula. We do get a shield briefing for each of those and then the new rules for both of the scenarios and even some strategy for them. Let's just take a quick look at them. So in Risky Business, we can see the Green Goblin, his main scheme, we got some environment cards, his minions. He's got, well, let's take a good look. Hired gun and private security specialist. We've got some side schemes like collapsing bridges, payoffs, some treachery cards, which makes sense, and the mad genius. Now, we'll take a look at what we get in the mutagen formula. Looks to be like a more crazed version of the goblin here. We do have main schemes like Unleashing Mutagen, Mutagen Cloud. He's got attachments like his Goblin go Glider, Hysteria. Just seems to be more about making him stronger. We've got some Servant Goblins, something that we didn't have in the other set, Goblin Thrall. So all these people being mutated into Goblins. We even have the Monsters. Then we get some of the side schemes uh, such as Reinforcements, Goblin Nations, Overrun. Death from above, that's definitely appropriate for him. And once again, more treachery cards. Now we'll take a look at the modular decks. So here we've got goblin gimmicks that can be added in, different things that can be attached to the villains, making them stronger, and even giving them some regenerative powers. That's not that fun. So in a mess of things, we've got a side quest where we're gonna have to face Scorpion gang up so they can gang up on us and then his two tail sweep attacks next we've got power drain featuring electro 
So we got electromagnetic pulse, lightning bolts, shock therapy. It is very cool how this pack is really all about Spider-Man villains. Then we've got Tombstone for running interference. And looks to be like all tied up, attached to your secret identity card. Media coverage because he's fam famous. So pretty cool. Definitely like what we see from that pack. Now next, we'll take a look at Miss Marvel. Now, I just want to make sure I've got the right one. Nope. That was Cap's rule book. Now, there really isn't much to the rule book. It's more just a nice presentation of the credits, who designed it. We've got their standard deck, what's recommended. And we got a poster of the character, which is pretty cool. Now, we get her main deck. So, we've got her alter ego, Miss Marvel, Oliver, her companion plus, well, ally, really. Then we get all of her different superpowers in the deck. I'm just gonna go through some of this stuff a little quickly. Next, she has her own protection deck, so we do get a whole slew of new protection cards. We get Nova, we get Get Behind Me, Preemptive Strike, Tackle, the Power Protection, which I believe we do have a few of already, and Energy Berry, which is another new card. Now, she does also come with a pre-made basic deck. We do get some new basic cards like Lockjaw. There's some standard ones. Endurance is a new card for her. And I believe Enhanced Reflexes was one that we haven't seen as well. As with all heroes, they get an obligation. And then their own side scheme, the race right to their specific villain. So we've got Thomas Edison, his giant robot, and he's trying to harvest some people. Now, here we've got the stop section. Now. Don't really need to stop. It's just that these aren't part of the pre-made deck. So you might want to keep this separate for your first play. Here we got some new cards that can go in any deck. So new aggression cards such as melee, concussive blow, morale boost, and downtime. Now we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at Captain America, Steve Rogers. It was definitely missing from the core game, but glad he's one of the first expansions out. So once again, just quick little overview. We've got his starting deck and then the poster that comes on the back. As with Ms. Marvel, we've got Steve Rogers. We get his alter ego card Then we've got his ally, Agent 13. He's going to be using Heroic Strike, Shield Blocks, Shield Toss, his apartment, even has some upgrades, which is pretty cool. Feels very thematic for the character. We do have his pre-made leadership deck, so we get some new leadership cards. Falcon, Hawkeye, Squirrel Girl, Wonder Man. I do like the fact that we're getting a lot of allies in a leadership deck. We get Avengers Assemble. Makes sense. Make the Call. I believe we may have had those in the other... Leadership text as well, strengths and numbers, don't quite remember that one, power of leadership, and then the new Quinjet card. We also have his pre-made basic card deck, starting with really some ones that we've seen before, but we still get new ones like Avengers Tower, and we got the honorary Avenger cards. We have his obligation, which is a man at a time. And then we have the Hit Squad side scheme, which represents Baron Zemo, so we do have the villain Zemo, and of course a bunch of Hydra soldiers. Now, just like with Miss Marvel, we do get some new cards to add into any deck with the new Enrage condition, followed, expert defense, and the new basic cards, enhanced awareness. So there you have it. We have now gone over all the components for this first wave of expansions for Marvel Champions, the card game. Keep it right here as Julie and I will be coming back at you with our review of the expansions. So for this first wave of expansions, what did you think of them? And we should probably go through them uh, individually so it's not all that confusing for the viewers. Well, then we'll start on my side. So Miss Marvel uh, is not a character that I know because I don't, as I've mentioned before, I don't <laughs> read the comic books. So I asked you how she was related to Captain Marvel and I was told she's not. <laughs> No, she just assumed the title of Miss Marvel after 
Miss Marvel took on the mantle of Captain Marvel. That's what I know about her from the comics. I haven't read too many of her books yet, but I do know that she is one that is gaining in popularity, and we should see her in the MCU in the near future. So that being said, when it comes to her deck of cards and the way she plays, uh, she plays with the protection deck, and I found she requires much more comboing uh, with the cards to be effective. Um, so you really have to, you know, have to plan it out, and you have to get the right cards come out as well. I felt that she was a lot stronger once you got her upgrades, like in Big In, and that lets her like do more damage. And shrink, yeah. Shrink, yeah, shrink to uh, increase her thwart. Those make a big difference, and she's got some really cool things, like her alter ego. I think is a lot stronger than some of the other alter egos because mm -hmm. of the characters that will be assisting her. But I do know what you mean. She's kind of a character you really sort of have to build up. But she is definitely effective right away. She has some strong cards. Yes. I just don't know if I love her protection deck. I might want to mix in some of the cards that we have in the base game, but I'm not in love with her stand right out of the box. No, well, and that's it. And I played her first. We've, we've each played with each of the uh, the new heroes. And, I mean, it's not it's not the worst, but it's also, you know, not the best uh, it works well with Captain America because, and we'll get to him because of his style of play. Um, I, I had some issues with his uh, deck right out of the box as well. There's a few cards I don't find to be as useful, but we'll talk about it. Right. So, I mean, it's, like I said, it's not necessarily my favorite style of play. As, as we've laughed about many times, I like to smashy smash. So, what do you think, sorry to jump in there, but... I want to get your opinion because I thought she would play very well with an aggression deck thrown in with some of those extra attack well, we, cards. Well, we found that with uh, Captain Marvel, right? Because we've played you, we've played her both ways, and I think probably you know as you as you change out those base cards, yeah, they could be it could be more. Sorry, not the base cards, but the uh, the support the, style deck. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she's fun. Uh, she's definitely one I would play with. I think she'd probably be better as you play higher player counts as well as a good support character because like, she is very effective on uh, reducing, uh, on thwarting um, the schemes. No, I'd have to agree. I, I really like Miss Marvel. I think that her hero deck is great. I have no critique about it. I also do like all the protection cards that we get with her. I think that to really maximize her abilities is going to be either playing her protection with a custom-made protection deck using the base game. And I believe there's some extra cards, and I don't remember where they came from. I sorted them already that come with like either Captain America or Miss Marvel that you can also throw in. And then if you are playing maybe at a lower player count, you may want to consider throwing aggression for her because with Embiggen and some of those really strong attack cards, she can definitely become a major damage dealer. So the variety of play that you get with her deck I think is really good. It's just that I'm not in love with the base setup. So let's jump to the other hero. So Captain America. Captain America. So I let you play him first because uh, I thought you'd have fun with it. Um, I'll start with my comments. After having played her, it was nice to have a little bit more um, hit power, I would say. Uh, his, his, um, his cards are a little bit stronger, I find. Her cards are good too, but she, he's got more hit power. And he, yeah, not much thwarting though. No, she's more for thwarting. He's more for hitting and, and the leadership and getting things going. And he, you can combo some great hits. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I ran into some... Uh, card problems in the sense of what was coming up for me wasn't great i was uh it just luck of the draw just wasn't coming out very well and all my really good cards came out at the end and i just in my last hand and i ended up not needing to use it because you know we killed green goblin with a retaliation so I, I find that his best card is his shield throw which is really cool but it's crazy how he can basically clear the board with shield throw and it was just perfect for taking out all those annoying goblin minions that showed up uh, throughout our plays. Well, and he has a couple of different other ones, like the last ones I got were good as well. I just never got to, to play them. You know, you can do six damage with one card, uh, which is also good as well. Um, so, I mean, he's, he's, I mean, he's Captain America, and he plays like Captain America this way as well. Uh, he has a couple of cards in his deck that are kind of... But well, I think you need that because they can't all be great because then they'd, you know, he'd be overpowered compared to others. Well, that's what the customization comes in, and... 
Look, one card I was going to say that I didn't like because he probably has the best leadership deck as he's leading the Avengers, so you do have a fair bit of allies, some really cool and different ones like Wonder Man, uh, Falcon, Squirrel Girl. You can also make other allies into Avengers as well, which gives them some bonuses. But there's the Avengers Assemble card, which is very powerful if you have a lot of these cards out, but you need to get them out. And I find that it's fairly difficult to get a lot of those allies out. I just... Well, all at the same time. Yeah, exactly. All at the same time. It also lets you reset your own character, which is pretty cool. But that card itself is one that I would consider replacing with different leadership cards. I'd have to see what is in the base game and what we've gotten from the expansions and make something that maybe flows just... Uh, just find a that there's bit better. a lot of them. In my case, they came out... Well, there's all, three of them. <laughs> they, and they all came out within two hands, so... You know, I had them all at the same time, uh, which is a little frustrating because they're they're high cost as well, right? So if you don't have any allies out or not a lot of allies, it doesn't make much sense. No, but I think we we agree. Uh, overall, we both really like Captain America. I definitely think that both of these hero packs are very good. Like they both well for the future of the game. We're seeing some of the newer Marvel heroes enter the game, as well as some of the classics. Really looking forward to seeing what Thor is all about. And now let's move on and talk about a classic villain who actually comes with a lot of content in the box, the Green Goblin. So what did you think of these scenarios? He wasn't easy. No. And a little clunky the setup, I would uh, say. I was going to say, that first setup, um, you know, I think the words I had with Jason... As, as you all know, if you this is not your first video, Jason does the heavy lifting of figuring out the game, setting it up, and explaining it to me. Uh, well, we got it to the table, figuring we already knew how to play. And I sat there for a little while, and I said, okay, this is painful. Uh, it was that difficult for Jason to figure out you know, some of the cards. And it, it wasn't turned out, difficult. It, it turned out that it was, it was clear just once you found it. Yeah, it, it was... just wasn't clear when you were looking for it. It's clunky. There, there's a few cards that you need on setup, and there's some stuff that they could have done, either add into the rule book, say like, this card is the one that you need, so you, you, know, you may notice it. I mean, I went to the Board Game Geek forums, and they're like, oh, this card is double-sided. So someone went out of their way to Board Game Geek to let everyone know that the card was double-sided, because clearly it's, I'm not the only person that found the deck a little clunky. There's also the way the main schemes come into play, which is different than what we've seen in other in other scenarios where you know you're going to have your villain, you're going to pick the different schemes that you're going to take them on, whereas Green Goblin has a starting scheme and then a main scheme, another one that will be revealed during the course of the game. And that's pretty cool, though, because, you, you know, it's one revealed and it shows up, which I really enjoyed. But at the same point in time, it's not evident. You have to really pay attention to the card. So one thing that I think anyone that fully watches all this review should take away, read all the cards. And remember, card 624 is double-sided, and I'm forgetting the name of the scenario, for the first Green Goblin Criminal scenario. something? Criminal Mastermind, I think, is the one. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it was. Yes. Could be wrong. But you also get a whole slew of different side decks to mix in as well, which I thought was really cool. Now, we only played the two recommended scenarios, which tell you to use all of the Green Goblin stuff, the Goblin gimmicks, but you do get some of Spider-Man's Sinister Six, and uh, some other famous Spider-Man villains, they can be included in any play with their side quests. You get Scorpion, you get Electro, and Tombstone. So you're getting a lot of value in this scenario pack that'll even make, you know, that first scenario in the base game with Rhino different. You can even add more of a Spider-Man flavor if you so choose. I think that covers it. <laughs> Nothing that you want to add? <laughs> no, I mean, it's a, it's a standard, you know, it was, a, it was a little bit more difficult, I found, than some of them. I think some of the easier ones that we had in the base game. Um, I'd call it a mid, middle of the road difficulty, like you said, a little clunky to set up, and then any, you know, I don't have anything else to, to add to this. All right, so do you want to score them individually or just want to give a score for this wave? I kind of look at it as like one, one not wave. one expansion, but it's like one wave. This is what they're putting out for the first, you know, the first expansions for the game. We will continue to review the other waves as they come out. I don't know if we're ever going to review an individual box. I don't think it really adds enough uh, in terms of content. Okay, so that being time. said, Jason, what is your score? What is your rating? So overall, I have to say that I do like 
the expansions. I'm not the biggest fan of the way these decks are set up, but I gotta say, I think just the value that you're getting in the Green Goblin scenario pack and the amount of fun I had playing Captain America really sort of elevates even those small problems that I do have with these expansions. I give it an eight. It's another solid addition to the game and it's gonna keep it coming to the table even potentially more often with the added variety. And I'm looking forward to really diving more into that deck building element of this living card game. I'd say it's a seven and a half for me. It was a little bit clunky setup and you know, each of the different characters have a little bit something that I would modify. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. All right. So with that being said, what time is it now, Julie? Well, it's time to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when we have some new content for you. And down below in the video description, you will find links to all of our social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You want to see Julie and I playing Marvel Champions. Well, you won't see us. You might see the cards. Yes, you'll see the cards. You can take a look at all those feeds. The images will, will be there. Also popping up in front of us will be links to our previous videos. One will be to our latest release. The other will take you back to our review of Marvel Champions. So now it's time to grab our drinks. Grab our best friend. We're going to keep playing games. Definitely going to keep playing this one. So how excited are you about Thor? Very excited. <laughs> Is he becoming your favorite character? Is it just because of Chris Hemsworth and the abs? Well, I can't say that because I still like Thor, even though he was fat Thor in the last movie. All right. <laughs>